But do you know why we do it? When was the last time? Do you know why we work at it? Why we take the chance Have on you it? Have you taken many chances before? That you I don't never... want to be alone. Why did you really move think I don't understand? Full power and pleasure. Would you be able to make a chance? A true listen. relationship. I'll listen. If I answer you more, I'll try to understand what you tell me. Please you can't me leave this. me here. You stay here. Had with sexual me. encounters and rarely Please fought stay. prior to them. You don't I'll leave talk. me here for days. I'll talk. I'll Especially die here. Hard. I'll die. Are you still there? You didn't have to do this to me. <laughs> Did you leave me? Why did You're you sick. leave me here to talk die? To now tell me more about what you want. Is this question too hard? I won't do it. I won't die here. I'll have figured it out. When you get back, I'll have chewed through these ropes. I'll have chewed through my skin if necessary. I'll be waiting for you. Esperante. Hmm. Esperante. Is that Guatemalan? No, it's actually Filipino. Hmm. Okay. Um. This seems to be. Oh. No, the other one. There seems to be something lost. Did I get it? Yes. All right. Okay, first off, thank you for coming in today. I realize you had to take time off from your current job to do so. Yeah, that's no, that's no problem. That's all right. Yeah. What is? Taking time off for this interview. Would you be expecting time off from this job for an interview? No, no, I... I I plan to be with this company for a very long time. Well, were you planning on being with your current company for a very long time? No, not really. It was just a job to, uh, you know, pay my bills at the time. Is this your first interview with a new company? Yes. So if we offered you a job today, you would consider this the first one offered to you? No. See, when I was at my last job, I was unemployed, and I just took it because I needed the money. I settled for it. And this job, I can be more particular about what I do, so this is what I want to do. Shit. What? Well, he's falling. Well, now we gotta pick him up. Did you expect I realized that? Well, yeah, but you asked. I didn't ask. I questioned your abuse of language. You know better than that. Yeah, old habit. Sorry. It's all right. Just be careful. You know he'd be all over you if he was here right now. Yes. Yeah. Let's get him up. So what's his name? Asperante. What kind of a name is that? Must be Latin or something like that.
Hey, fellas. How's things going so far? The extraction was perfect. No witnesses. Hardly any struggling. Another beautiful day in paradise. Hmm? How you feeling? I'm feeling pretty good. Got to tell you. You know, feel free to stretch out, you know, get the circulation going. That'll make you feel better. Just laying there and all. <laughs> now let's see what we got here. I know what you're thinking. This guy, defiled by fatty pastries, and yet, he smokes the idiot stick. You're right. Cigarettes are my foil. I admit it. Do you smoke? No, it's all in the ritual. If you ever read me Hemingway? Hmm? Now, Hemingway, he understands ritual and the need to assign value to things, like smoking. See, it's not just about the smoke entering your lungs. It's definitely not about the drug, although it does seem to help the effect somewhat. It's about taking a moment. Let's say you're mowing the lawn, washing the family dog. You stop mowing the lawn. You leave that silly dog, you grab your smokes, and you take a moment. A moment to realize the weather. A moment to indulge in the fullness of experience. That smoke, that smoke already filling your tender little lungs, it's a metaphor for that experience, for that fullness. I mean, when was the last time you got that full off just a cup of coffee? 
well, maybe in a TV commercial, but in real life, a cup of coffee sends you to the little boy's room, doesn't it? And that leaves you just a bit more empty. And you know, cigarette, it's a reminder of patience. No matter how hard you try to toke through one, it's still gonna take a couple of minutes. And we know that patience is a virtue. We've learned that much by third grade. But we haven't learned how to be patient, have we? Patient for patience' sake. Now, if we're really smart, we also remember that good things come to those who wait. That's not exactly true, is it? Good things come to you while you're waiting, while you're patiently observing life as the smoke gathers in an elegant wisp and disperses. If only we could be with all things and all people like we are with the sanctity of a cigarette. only we could let those we love smolder inside of us rather than burn us up. Oh, sweet smoke. Making me feel more full. Making me feel like I don't need to run out into the woods and gather more kindling. You know, I was going to be a poet. Not a kidnapper. Strange how things turn out. Me, up here, you, down there. You, bound and gagged. Me, free as can be. Tell you what, how about you and I have a little chat? Hmm? Doesn't that sound nice? Wanna give me a hand? Of course. It says on your resume you've been working steadily since school. That's correct. I worked for an advertising agency for four years and then an insurance agency for one year. But you said you weren't employed, right, when you took your last job. That's true. I got the insurance job right away, so I had uh, very little time in between jobs, but there was a time where I wasn't employed, but it was just for about one pay period. So the resume... No, it, it, I just didn't think that information was important. I didn't, I didn't think it, you know, just that small amount of time was important to put in there. If I give you a project here and ask you to include any relevant information you discovered while working on the project, would you leave out anything that you deemed irrelevant? Well, yes. I would probably leave out information that didn't seem important. I'd want to present you with the most relevant information. 
So you would presume to know what information I would consider most relevant? No, I, I would have to get to know you first and probably get to know the company and the atmosphere. Precisely. Is that better? You feel like talking now? <sighs> Let's not do this this way, okay? We need to communicate together, both of us. Nothing's gonna happen if you don't talk to me, except that I'm gonna continue to beat you. I'll tell you, I'll tell you what, look. I'll forego the beatings. No beatings? Just a little talking. What a deal. When's life ever present a deal like that? Sure is a nice jacket. I bet the job interviewer liked that jacket. I bet it stood out in his mind. Yeah, that's why you wore it, right? So it would stand out in his mind? Well, I can tell you, you're certainly gonna stand out in my mind. Tell me about your job. What are the three most important responsibilities in your current job? Well, I'm the customer service quality assessment coordinator. And uh, my primary responsibility is writing all the company business letters. Another is uh, updating the employee handbook and revising it with all the new policies. And then uh, making sure that all the uh, employees see the new policies and receive new handbooks. And um, then they sign and uh, give me their signature noting that they've read and thereby understand the new policies. Hmm. Do you ever leave any policies out you deem irrelevant? No, no, of course not. How come? Well, the management makes the decisions and I just basically convey them to the employees. Did you understand that? Well, I mean, you didn't say anything. Interesting. Do you live in fear of management? No, but I respect management. What is it exactly about them you respect? I respect their positions and their titles within the firm. Would you say that um, they've earned your respect? Certainly. How? By hiring you? No, because they're managers. Managers deserve respect. Okay, okay, I think I understand. <laughs> okay. So, the respect you have for them is inherent in their position, and you defer to them absolutely. I wouldn't say that. I, I respect them because they're the boss. Don't you respect your boss? With absolute deference. So, going back to the subject. You took a job, but you really don't understand what it is you'll be doing? Well, why would you do that? Aren't you curious to know what will occupy more than 50% of your waking life? I, I know I would be. When was the last time you can remember your job making you feel good? Hmm? Interesting response. Perhaps your throat's a little dry. Would you like some water? There. Let's give you just a morsel of water for your efforts today. There you go. How's that? How's that? Oh, okay. How's that? Is that good? Is that good? Take, tell me when the last time it was that your job made you feel good. Fuck you. You know, 
That's the same thing that keeps us from getting anywhere. Do you understand that? Do you understand that those words that you think are hurtful are just blocking you from getting in touch with what you need to? Do you understand that? Do you? What? Yeah. Do you understand? Tell me you yes. understand. Okay then. You have a good night. You know, scratch that. I hate these standard interview questions anyway. Let's try something else. Um, okay. It's 8.35 a.m. Uh, say you're in the office getting coffee or herbal tea or something. Uh, you start work at 8.30 a.m. You with me? Yeah, yeah, go on. It's 8.38 a.m., exactly eight minutes after you begin work. Uh, the phone rings three times. You pick it up and say... I say... Hello, can I help you? Uh, okay, let's say it's 8.45 a.m. And, uh, the phone rings two times. You say? I say... Hello, it's 8.45 a.m. Can I help you? No, no. Forget it. Let's try something else. It's, uh, 12.33 p.m. You've just returned from your half-hour lunch and you've got a cookie or a brownie laying on your desk on a napkin. Uh, just then your supervisor comes up and asks you what you're doing. You reply... I, 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 you know, I, I don't know. I, I'd be doing something. I wouldn't be just sitting around doing nothing. No, perhaps you're missing the point of these situations. Do they confuse you? Well, yes. Usually I can produce the correct answer, but here I can't produce the correct answer. So you believe that I miscommunicated the information? No, no, I just think I just didn't get enough information to answer the question. I see. You need more information, but I gave you all the information that I thought was important. You should have had the answer to both questions with half as much information. What, what are you talking about? I, how could I answer the question if I didn't even know what I was doing? The correct answer to question number one is... I, I told you, I don't know. I had such hopes for you. It's been four days since you last talked. Four days? It's astonishing. Do you remember the last time that you went four days without talking? If it makes you feel any better, I'm not mad at you for the other day. Foul as it was, it let me know where you were at, and that is important. But I should warn you. One thing you don't want is an angry kidnapper. You see, there is no end to the tortures that I could inflict upon you should I possess the inclination. Okay. Don't say I didn't warn you. I 
say and earn that 5% raise. You'll sit here. Okay, sport. You'll sit here and run reports. And you'll watch that clock for a while. Watch that old clock for a while. It seems so unclear to me what I'm doing here. I never hurt anyone, but I'm the kidnapped one. And here I sit. answer to question number two is... Are you crazy? I don't know. I, I, I'd do whatever my boss told me to do. Yes! The correct answer to question number two. What answer? What, what did I say? You said you'd do whatever the supervisor told you to, and with such little coaxing. I should make notes on this interview process. It's so much better than the standard screening techniques. May I use your pen? Oh, sure, sure. Here. So I, I would do exactly as my supervisor asked me to do. And the correct answer to number one is? I, I'd do whatever you told me to. Concentrate. Again, the correct answer to number one. Oh, oh, I'd answer the phone in the manner that my supervisor told me to. Hallelujah! That wasn't so bad, was it? I sincerely hope that you think about it. That you find the answer you're looking for. Please don't blindfold me. Leave me. Don't leave me here. I don't I don't want to be alone. I'm so th so thirsty. Are you there? Let's say you're working late. It's 10.45 p.m. You haven't had any dinner. In fact, you're starving. Uh, there's no food around, and all the restaurants have closed. And there's, you have about two hours of work left on this report you said will be on your supervisor's desk first thing in the morning. He calls from home to check on you, and you say... I say, don't worry, sir. I'll stay, and I'll work on that report and have it on your desk exactly when you asked for it. Precisely. I'm so thirsty. Please let me go. Please let me go. He's got my pen. You know, Esperante, I think you'll do very well here. You know the system and what it expects from you. Uh, as long as you're not a creative person and love repetitive tasks, 
I think we can make a place for you here. Thank you. Thank you very much. Hello? Hi! Yes, yes, I'm here. No, not too good. Well, same story. He just won't talk. I know, I know. I tried that. Oh, I tried that too. He just won't talk. But anyways, how about you? How are you doing? Really? Oh, absolutely. I could be there. Let's see. Give me about an hour, hour and a half. Well, make that two. Okay, I'll see you then. All right. Bye bye. Well, now, oh, I didn't see that coming. <laughs> 